Hello and welcome back to the channel. This will be a code walkthrough of a sample application or really just a component that demonstrates how to do type ahead using React Router v7, aka Remix, the latest version. So we just type something in, or a eng, orange, uh, that's too easy. Let's say apple. We have the arrow keys working. You can, or you can just click and select, and then we give you the selected item. In the example, I made sure that my list was an object because most of the time that you're going to be doing something like this, you'll probably be querying from a database or some other list and there'll be a unique identifier associated. So I implemented that inside of my example. So that's what we're gonna be covering in this code walkthrough. I will post a link with the video to the full source code so you can take it and kind of build upon it, do whatever you wanna do with it. Please make sure you like and subscribe and let's get to the code. All right, before I get really into the code, I'm first gonna show you just the endpoint that we have built in the application. So we built an API endpoint called suggestions that that's what we're using to query this. And so just so you can see how you can test it in the Postman or some similar tool, we just have our endpoint, we pass a, var a value. If we don't pass any value, we get nothing back. If we pass a variable like this, and so if I say pine and then enter, it returns an array of results. So let's see, will it work with just one letter? Yeah, so this is basically what our API endpoint does. We've created this inside of the Remix app, sorry, the React Router v7 framework application also. So now let's, let's take a look at the code. I built this app using the default params to start edit app. So I followed these steps here to get my application started. To make my user interface look a little bit nicer, I've included Tailwind and in, their comp in, a, in a Tailwind component library called Daisy UI. I'll keep the links in below. I just did it. It's just easier to, instead of writing all the Tailwind out, to start with some component library. So that's why I use Daisy UI. So after the app is done, I'm just gonna cover the files that I've changed that are specific to making this work. So let's start with the routes TS. You can see, so index is just the home. Nothing magical there. And then the main one here is this API suggestions, which points to this location in my project, route slash API suggestions.tsx. And let's quickly just show the project structure. So as I mentioned, this is our routes file. We didn't modify the root. We didn't modify the home. So let's take a quick look at the home. So just your regular meta stuff that comes by default. I tried my best to document this with the help of cursor. This keeps track of the selected value. And this handle selects is a callback from the type ahead component that I wrote. And it has an event handler called on select. And so basically once you select an item from this, it will pass it back on the on select and you get the value. And as you can see, that's the value that's console log down here. So we've covered our home, we've covered our routes. So let's close those guys out, home and routes. We take a look at how the API works. Let's take a look now at the actual source code for our endpoint to kind of query this. So clearly I, I'm getting the types through my API suggestions. These are automatically generated for you, which is very nice. I have my fake database here of fruits. And then we get to our actual loader. So this is what's gonna be called when you hit that endpoint. We are gonna get our, our search param passed in on a query string. So I take my request, I generate my request URL, I look at my search params, and off my search params, I get what is in queue, I trim it, put it to lowercase, and that is now what I will be querying my list of fruit with. And so the simulated query, all we're doing is we're basically just filtering the list. We're taking the top 10, and then I'm returning my values right here. And I'm returning an object that is an array of suggestions, and the suggestions is this type that I've created up here. So it's got the ID and the string. So that's my API. And then now in my actual type head component, all right, these are the props. It returns this on select. An example of how it's used. 
And then here's my type head. Once again, here's the type for the props that are being passed in. Here's my fetcher that I'm using. My fetcher is going to return this object, suggestions array. I'm keeping track of what I'm focused on. A lot of this, this is being used for the arrow function, not the arrow function, but it gives you the ability to kind of use your cursor up and down, up and down, and be able to find out where you're currently focused in the list. This is setting the query string that's actually being used. This is which item in the list is selected. So is it zero, one, or nothing? And these are refs that I'm using to keep track of specific things, mostly used to render the UI appropriately. So let's get to the code. So down here, we're tracking basically whenever the query string changes. The query string is kind of what you're typing in this box right here. If there's nothing, then I clear my fetcher data. My fetcher data is what's being used to render this list of fruit here. And then this is my poor man's debounce. So I'm waiting 300 milliseconds before I actually execute this API call. The API call is being done using fetcher and I'll get my results from the fetcher back in this fetcher data object. Okay, this does as it says, it resets the selected index when the suggestions change. So we don't know, so basically I haven't selected anything yet because my result set has changed. This is the callback that handles when the, where did it go? When a user actually selects something. So when a user actually suggests, uh, selects one of the items in the list, the object gets passed back in here. I'm setting the query string to match the value of the one that was selected. Nothing is focused anymore. We clear out the selection index and then we call our callback with the object that was selected. This is a bunch of code, which I did a little bit myself and I'm not gonna lie, I needed a little bit of help from Cursor to get it just right. But it basically supports this, all the functionality for moving the cursor up and down, enter to select one, and all of the other magic that happens with the keyboard. So it's just all about full keyboard support. So if we get a key down event and I have no string or there's nothing in the result set that I got from fetcher data, then I just bail. I shouldn't do anything. Here's a switch to handle the different keys. So the arrow down, of course, is modifying the selected index, which will adjust which. So if I do this, the arrow up, the arrow down is modifying which item is highlighted as the active one. So that's arrow up and arrow down. The enter, if I hit the enter key, so if I have an item selected, it's basically just saying, give me the selected item, pass that back as selected. If there's nothing selected, then I just return the first item in the list, and then I blur the field to kind of move off. Escape basically just shuts everything down, sets nothing, to, sets focus to false, sets selected index to nothing, and then basically shuts the field down again on the blur. And this is the actual template that gets returned that's being rendered here. I have an input object. Here's all the event handlers that I spoke about earlier on change. And that's where I'm setting the query string. This is determining if something in the list is focused. All right. And then this, the rest of this code now is covering this drop down box. When it's searching, uh, I don't know if you saw quickly there, but uh, you saw the loading appears quickly. That's what this is for. So if you're using a database, you'd probably see the loading stay up a little bit longer. Um, this is my menu. So this is this list that's appearing here. And it's just looping through the objects and kind of rendering them. As I mentioned earlier, if I click one, it becomes a selected one. I'm tracking which index is selected and assigning this using this area selected prop to keep track. And then there's this link that wraps the value and it styles it based on if it's a selected item or not. And that is really it. We query our API suggestion. We get a result back in our fetcher.data. We map through it and we render it either through a keyboard, which is this stuff. We move up and down the list. And then on an enter, we handle select or 
as you're navigating through the list, you click down on one of the items and you handle select. The handle select passes the value back and it gets rendered. That's basically it. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have more questions, please leave a link or comment below. If you see something not right in the source code, open up issue. Hopefully you find this helpful. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.